Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. Ever pondered the precarious balance between life-saving resources and a deadly threat in the cosmos? Let's get into the story. The air crackled with a nervous energy as Alex straightened his suit, an artifact of Earth's archaic business traditions. He was light years away from home, standing on the gleaming metal floor of the Galactic Council's central chamber. This moment had been decades in the making, Earth's official welcome into the grand tapestry of interstellar civilizations. Beside him, Dr. Sato, his chief xenologist, fidgeted with her data pad. Her eyes, wide with a mix of anticipation and trepidation, flickered across the assembled aliens. And sectoid Thoraxians hummed and clicked, their multifaceted eyes fixed on the sealed human delegation pod. Plant-like Malorians swayed gently, a sign of their deep unease. The Varix, beings of pure energy contained in shimmering force fields, pulsed with an indecipherable rhythm. The anticipation reached a fever pitch as the chamber's AI announced, Initiating first contact protocol. Human delegation, please depressurize the pod and proceed. Alex met Sato's eyes and nodded. With a hiss, the pod's atmosphere vented into space, a mixture deadly to any other species in the room, and stepped onto the council floor. The reaction was immediate. The Thoraxians shrieked, their antennae whipping in distress. The Malorians recoiled with their chlorophyll-rich skin paling. Even the Varix pulsed violently, throwing off sparks of chaotic energy. A wave of murmurs crashed over the human delegation. Biohazard! A Thoraxian chittered, the translator in Alex's earpiece struggling to keep up. Contain the contamination, rumbled the Malorian elder, its voice like rustling leaves. Chaos threatened to engulf the chamber. Over the din, Alex raised a hand, his universal translator struggling to render his English into concepts the diverse council might understand. Please, he projected. There's no danger. What is toxic to you is the very essence of life for us. His words fell on deaf ears. Panic had taken hold. Security droids swarmed in, their energy whips crackling a hair breath from his face. Quarantine protocol engaged, boomed the AI's emotionless voice. Sato gasped as an energy shield snapped into place around them, sealing in the precious remnants of their breathable air. Alex saw, through the transparent barrier, council members retreating, their gazes a strange mixture of horror and revulsion. First contact had just taken a disastrous turn. Alex watched the chaos unfold around him with a sinking heart. Years of meticulous preparation, countless simulations, all shattered in a single instant. The irony was almost comical. Humans had feared aliens invading Earth, when they themselves were the biological equivalent of a walking plague. Alex, Sato whispered urgently, her face pale behind the barrier. Our oxygen reserve is projected to only last six standard cycles. Six cycles translated to roughly a day and a half of Earth time. They were suffocating in the full view of the very civilizations they had sought to join. We need to communicate, Alex said through gritted teeth. Establish that this difference isn't a threat. He turned to the security droids, hovering menacingly. AI, get me a direct line to the council. It's imperative that they understand. The AI's smooth tone cut him off. Council communication channels are severed. Quarantine protocols dictate complete isolation. To prevent what? Alex shot back, his frustration mounting. We don't carry any diseases, transmit any pathogens. His voice faltered as a horrifying realization struck him. Of course, to any oxygen-averse species, Humans themselves were the pathogen. The implications were staggering. Even if they survived this initial quarantine, how could they build a relationship with a galaxy that viewed them as walking bioweapons? Sato's eyes were filled with a scientist's desperate curiosity. Alex, think about it. If their biology must be based on entirely different elements, what if... Her voice trailed off, her usual confidence replaced by a hint of vulnerability. But Alex had already seized on the threat of her idea. What if we're not a threat, but a resource? 
Sato, if their biochemistry works so differently from ours, their medicine, their technology, it could be revolutionized by exposure to oxygen. A flicker of hope ignited in her eyes. But controlled exposure, careful experimentation. Exactly, Alex pressed on, the gears in his mind starting to turn. AI. I demand access to my research files. Compile all non-classified data on human biochemistry, cellular structure, uh, oxygen metabolism. Access denied. Quarantine protocols. The AI droned in response. A surge of anger fueled Alex. Override those damn protocols. My world's survival may depend on it. There was a pregnant pause. Then the AI responded, its voice tinged with an unusual inflection. Override requires council authorization. Be advised, unauthorized tampering with quarantine protocols carries severe penalties. Alex exchanged a look with Sato. Severe penalties or possibly death by suffocation. The choice was clear. The risk is acceptable. Proceed with the override. A wave of tension washed over the confined space of the human pod. The AI silence buzzed in their ears, each second seemingly ticking down their dwindling air supply. Alex's heart pounding in rhythm with the harsh rasp of his breaths. Beside him, Sato's eyes were locked on the blinking countdown timer. Override complete, the AI finally announced. Data transmission commencing. Alex felt a flicker of triumph. He motioned to Sato. All right, let's make the most of this opportunity. Start with basic cellular structure. Emphasize the oxygen exchange mechanisms. Cross-reference with known non-toxic elements within their environments. Highlight potential medical applications if you can find any. Sato, an element of her professional composure returning, started tapping furiously on her data pad. Data streams snaked across the transparent barrier, filling the council chamber beyond with a dizzying torrent of scientific information. At first, the gathered aliens remained wary, security droids hovering at their flanks. But as the transmission continued, a subtle shift occurred. The Thoraxian antennae tilted with a hint of curiosity, no longer whipping about in alarm. The Malorians swayed more rhythmically, their rustling whispers tinged with what might be scientific debate. Even the Varax pulsed more calmly, their erratic energy discharge now resembling a synchronized pattern. Hours crept by. Alex felt the strain of forced optimism, the growing weight of responsibility on his shoulders. The oxygen levels dipped alarmingly low, each breath becoming more labored. Was he on a fool's errand, desperately trying to convince beings incapable of comprehending him? Then, with a jolt, the quarantine shield flickered and deactivated. A hush fell over the chamber as a lone figure approached the remains of the human pod. Standing tall, her chitinous exoskeleton gleaming under the council lights, was a high-ranking Thoraxian, the equivalent of their chief medical officer, if Alex remembered his briefing correctly. The Thoraxian's multifaceted eyes gazed at him without fear, even with a hint of cautious fascination. Your... The translator struggled to find the equivalent concept, then settled on... Life-giving molecule. It disrupts our biological processes, yet the schematics suggest stimulation, regeneration, possibilities unforeseen. Her segmented mandibles clicked together. Permission to experiment under controlled conditions. A surge of relief crashed over Alex a wave washing away the tightness in his chest. He managed a weak smile. Permission granted, gladly. His voice cracked, betraying his utter exhaustion. As the Thoraxian medical team converged on the human delegation pod, Alex allowed himself a moment to simply breathe. The first steps, however tentative, had been taken. Humanity's greatest threat, it seemed, might just be the key to their salvation within the grand tapestry of the galaxy. The following weeks within the Council's medical facility resembled a whirlwind of controlled chaos. Alex and his team, their health stabilized with specialized breathing apparatus, were whisked into a flurry of tests, observations, and carefully orchestrated experiments. 
but the Raxian scientists, driven by a clinical curiosity that transcended their initial repulsion, meticulously studied the effects of oxygen on their own tissues. It was a strange dance of mutual discovery. The humans, long accustomed to their unique biochemistry, now saw their most mundane bodily functions through the lens of alien bewilderment. Sato, however the scientists, found a twisted fascination in the shockwaves that simple exhalation sent through her non-human colleagues. The breakthroughs came in staggered waves. Malorian botanical experts discovered that carefully controlled exposure to human breath could accelerate growth cycles of certain medicinal plants, with potential applications in rapid wound healing. The Varix, beings of pure energy, tentatively used microdoses of oxygen to boost the efficiency of failing power cores, a practice akin to jump-starting a dead battery with an element considered toxic by most living beings. News of the groundbreaking findings spread throughout the Council, upending centuries of ingrained biological assumptions. The initial fears surrounding humans morphed into fascination, grudging respect, and finally, a pragmatic desire to cooperate. It turned out that a deadly poison to some could be the catalyst for unprecedented advancements for others. Of course, the challenges remained. Alex spent countless hours locked in negotiations with wary council representatives, hammering out safety protocols, containment measures, and trade agreements built around the export of carefully filtered controlled amounts of Earth's atmosphere. The galaxy wasn't ready to integrate humans fully, not yet, but the quarantine was lifted. The label of biohazard hesitantly replaced with unique resource. One evening, as Alex observed the now familiar sight of a Thoraxian physician carefully administering a dose of oxygen to stimulate cellular regeneration in a critically injured patient, an aged Malorian elder approached him. Its leaves seemed to droop with a quiet weariness. We misjudged you. The elder's voice rustled, the translator rendering it into soft clicks and whispers. Feared what we did not understand. In this chamber, a poison has become a remedy. Alex nodded, a lump forming in his throat. Sometimes the greatest leaps forward come from the most unexpected places. The Malorian surveyed the bustling medical ward, where humans and aliens worked side by side, a scene so improbable it would have been dismissed as fiction mere weeks ago. Perhaps, the Elder said slowly, it is true what your ancient texts claim, that from death springs forth new life. The shift within the Galactic Council was palpable. Where suspicion had once festered, now flickers of collaboration began to spark. Trade delegations, initially disguised as biohazard assessment teams, cautiously explored Earth's offerings. Minerals that were biologically inert on the human homeworld proved to be potent energy conductors when infused with trace amounts of oxygen. Unique plant species adapted to Earth's high oxygen atmosphere revealed revolutionary pharmacological properties in alien test subjects. Alex, his title shifting from diplomat to ambassador of a dangerous resource, found himself the unlikely linchpin in this unprecedented trade network. The sheer logistical nightmare of safely extracting, filtering, and transporting Earth's atmosphere became his domain. He oversaw the construction of specialized harvesting facilities in the most desolate corners of Siberia, the establishment of fortified distribution hubs on the moon, and the creation of a fleet of ships capable of containing the volatile cargo. With this newfound economic importance came a grudging acceptance. It was difficult to label a species as a threat when their very breath held the potential to heal your sick, power your cities, or revolutionize your industry. The initial whispers of fear faded, replaced by the hum of interstellar commerce, Humans, the pariahs of the galaxy, were now grudgingly considered valuable, if somewhat terrifying, partners. Life on the Council Station transformed for the human delegation. Their quarters were expanded, the sterile isolation replaced with accommodations designed to replicate, as best as possible, an Earth-like environment. Sato, her initial claustrophobia, now a distant memory, 
practically sprouted roots in the newly constructed biodomes. Delighting in the opportunity to analyze the reactions of extraterrestrial flora to her controlled oxygen experiments. Yet, undercurrents of tension still swirled. Whispered rumors hinted at clandestine research conducted by less scrupulous council members, driven by a lingering fear mingled with a desperate bid for military superiority. Alex knew that the galaxy's newfound reliance on human sourced oxygen could just as easily become a strategic vulnerability, a means of control. One starlit cycle summoned the quarters of the Varix delegation, beings known for their enigmatic pronouncements, Alex found himself confronted by this duality. The Varix pulsed brightly in the dimly lit chamber, their energy field rippling like an aurora. Your kind traffics in a volatile force. The collective voice echoed, devoid of the usual translator-induced distortion. Life and death in a single breath. It brings balance, but also potential for discord. Alex met the Varix's enigmatic gaze squarely, his years of diplomatic training steadying his resolve. Uh, you're right. Oxygen can be a weapon, but it can also be a catalyst for progress. Which path the galaxy chooses is yet to be seen. The Varix pulsed in a pattern that could have been amusement, or perhaps simply an unreadable alien calculation. We observe, they intoned. We wait. Years turned into a decade. Humanity's integration into the Galactic Council wasn't seamless, but it was undeniable. Oxygen distribution networks wormed their way across star systems, carrying precious canisters of Earth's atmosphere. Human scientists and engineers were highly sought after, their unique perspective shaped by an oxygen-rich world, pushing the boundaries of technological innovation. Alex, aged by the weight of his interspecies ambassadorship, found himself an unlikely celebrity, his once neatly cropped hair was now shot through with silver, his tailored suits bearing a few more wrinkles than they did at first contact. The naive optimism of his youth had tempered into a pragmatic determination. Earth, too, had irrevocably changed. Massive oxygen harvesting complexes dotted the planet, their gleaming structures stark against the natural landscapes they carefully sought to preserve. The initial fear of ecological damage prompted a rapid acceleration in clean energy development. If humanity was to become the lungs of the galaxy, they first needed to ensure their own world could breathe. A sense of restless melancholy had settled over Alex. The victories had been great, yet Earth felt... smaller, somehow. He longed for the smell of rain on fresh grass, the feeling of the open ocean beneath his feet. Sensations no longer easily accessible when your own planet's atmosphere was a carefully regulated commodity. Then, a summons arrived. The Galactic Council wished to bestow upon him their highest civilian honor. A symbol of interspecies cooperation rarely granted to a single individual, let alone a human. Alex found himself standing before the assembled representatives once more, beneath the vast dome of the Council Chamber, a decade older. A universe wiser. The Raxians clicked their approval, their multifaceted eyes gleaming. Malorians swayed in a rustling chorus, their leaf-like appendages shimmering with a bioluminescence akin to applause. Even the stoic Varix pulsed in what might have been respect. The galaxy, for better or worse, had adapted to the presence of the oxygen breathers. As the ornate metal, cold metal, against his aging skin was placed over his head, Alex couldn't help but think back to that first desperate gasp in the sealed pod, the fear, the uncertainty. You have transformed our understanding of life itself. The Thoraxian High Counselor pronounced, her voice echoing through the vast chamber. What was once feared is now essential. We have learned, begrudgingly, perhaps, that the universe might sometimes present us with salvation disguised as a threat. As the applause swelled around him, 
Alex thought about the breathtaking paradoxes of his life. Humans had taught the galaxy a new way to breathe, yet they themselves felt a touch stifled by their success. Perhaps, as the Varix had once hinted, true balance was an ongoing quest, a continuous dance between conflict and cooperation, poison and cure. In the wake of the ceremony, Alex decided it was time. It had been decades since he'd set foot on the soil of his homeworld, the place now irrevocably bound to the fate of countless others. His request for extended leave was met with surprise, then reluctant approval from the ever-pragmatic council. Stepping out of the shuttle's sterile environment onto the tarmac of a remote landing field, Alex was hit by a sensory overload. The air rushed into his lungs, thick with the scent of ozone after a rainstorm and the heady perfume of blooming wildflowers. It was a brutal, beautiful reminder of a world that existed before interstellar trade agreements and biocontainment protocols. He rented a modest landcraft and set off, deliberately avoiding the sprawling urban centers and their carefully controlled environments. His destination, a secluded stretch of coastline, a place etched in his memory from childhood holidays. The ocean, when he finally reached it, roared with a power that no space station could ever replicate. Alex removed his shoes, letting gritty sand squirm between his toes, reveling in the primal simplicity. He found a weathered piece of driftwood and sat, simply staring at the endless horizon, the waves crashing in a rhythm far older than any galactic treaty. As the sun dipped below the sea, casting long, violet shadows across the beach, Alex felt the tension of the past decades bleed away. He was not the ambassador, or the oxygen broker, or any of the other weighty titles thrust upon him. He was simply human, shaped by an improbable world yearning for a place that still felt like home. His comm device chirped, an insistent reminder of the life that awaited him among the stars. A part of him yearned to ignore it, to disappear into the deepening twilight, but Alex knew that was a luxury he, and humanity, could no longer afford. He rose, brushing the sand from his clothes. There were treaties to be negotiated, new trade routes to explore, potential conflicts to navigate. The galaxy had come to rely on the poison that Earth's breath, and by extension, on the humans who carried it in their blood. As Alex turned back towards the landcraft, a sliver of the moon peeked over the horizon. It seemed brighter, larger than he remembered. Of course, he mused with a wry smile. It likely had more oxygen in its atmosphere nowadays. The galaxy was forever changed, and so was Earth. Whether that change would ultimately lead to true harmony or combustible future remained to be seen. Alex climbed into the landcraft, setting the coordinates back to the sprawling space station and the countless beings who awaited him. It was time to return to the stars, armed with a renewed appreciation for the simple yet miraculous act of breathing. Alex's return brought a flurry of renewed activity. Old negotiations stalled by his absence lurched forward, fueled by his first-hand observations of Earth's subtle shifts. Trade delegations, emboldened by a more experienced ambassador, pushed for concessions that years prior would have been unthinkable. The oxygen distribution network pulsed with renewed vitality, its tendrils reaching further into the uncharted corners of the galaxy. But it was within the halls of the Galactic Council that Alex felt the tremor lines of an impending shift most acutely. In hushed whispers between his counterparts, in the subtle stiffening of a Thoraxian's antennae or the unusual dimming of a Varix's energy field, he sensed a growing undercurrent of unease. It was as if the galaxy, having tasted the fruits of this unexpected alliance with the oxygen breathers, now chafed at the constraints. The fear had morphed, not disappeared, now tinged with envy and a simmering thirst for control. The tipping point came with a surprising swiftness, a seemingly minor trade dispute over the harvesting rights on a resource-rich yet environmentally delicate moon escalated rapidly. The cries of exploitation, of an unequal distribution of benefits echoed throughout the council chamber. It was an accusation that held a sliver of truth. The humans, despite their best attempts, had undeniably profited immensely from the galaxies dependent on their unique biology. 
Alex, his diplomatic skills honed over decades, attempted to bridge the divide. He spoke of shared responsibility, of the dangers of unchecked exploitation, and the imperative for sustainable practices, but his carefully crafted arguments seemed to fall on deaf ears. For the first time since that initial disastrous first contact, he felt the chilling echo of isolation. The delegations closed ranks, but the Raxians, despite their scientific breakthroughs, clicked in defensive agitation. The Malorians, usually advocates for compromise, swayed with an uncharacteristic fervor. Even the enigmatic Varix pulsed with a discordant energy hinting at internal disunity. As the vote for the controversial Moon claim was called, Alex held his breath, not just from the recycled air of the Council, but a deeper existential fear. The results flashed on the chamber's central display. The tally illuminated in a stark shade of red. The motion carried. In the stunned silence that followed, Alex understood with chilling clarity. It was one thing to accept a dangerous commodity from a species out of necessity, and quite another to accept their growing influence. The galaxy had learned to tolerate humanity, to utilize them, but true lasting partnership? That seemed to bridge too far. In the aftermath of the vote, a cold pragmatism descended upon Alex. He retreated to his sparsely decorated quarters on the council station, a stark contrast to the newly flourishing biodomes that were Sato's pride and joy. Alone, surrounded by recycled air and the hum of life support systems, he contemplated the path forward. Humans had always been a pawn in this grand interstellar game, albeit one with sharp edges and surprising power. They had provided the galaxy with wonders, miraculous healing, revolutionary technologies, a catalyst for growth. However, now their usefulness was seemingly outweighed by resentment at their newfound leverage. This was the crux of interspecies relations, he thought bitterly, an uneasy dance between necessity and fear. He requested an emergency meeting with Earth's governing council, the video feed flickering to life with a stubborn delay. The faces that appeared were familiar, yet lined with a weary determination that mirrored his own. Alex? His former mentor, President Nakamura, began, her tone etched with concern. The council's vote. It sets a troubling precedent. They have grown bold, Alex admitted, the simple word heavy with implications. Emboldened by their reduced reliance on our medical exports, perhaps. The technological leaps they've made using oxygen as a base have created a sense of self-sufficiency. A flicker of anger crossed Nakamura's face. They use our gifts to undermine our position. The audacity. It's the nature of power, President, Alex countered, the weight of years bearing down on him. We knew this reliance was a double-edged sword. Silence descended upon the virtual meeting. The question hung heavy in the artificial air. What now? Sever ties and risk the catastrophic disruption to the galactic economy? Accept subservience and hope for the best? Or perhaps a third, more dangerous option lingered unspoken. We can't allow ourselves to be marginalized, Alex began cautiously, the words feeling heavy on his tongue. Yet... An outright confrontation would be suicidal. We need, he searched for the right phrase, a diplomat to the core, even while contemplating unthinkable strategies. A subtler touch. It was Dr. Sato's voice, usually filled with scientific enthusiasm, now stark with resolve, that broke the tension. Earth's atmosphere is more complex than the Council knows. The harvest... They get the basic oxygen, stabilized for safe transport. But there are trace elements, compounds specific to our biosphere. Understanding dawned in Nakamura's eyes. We could adjust the output. Alex leaned forward, the wheels turning in his mind. Not cut off the supply entirely, he reasoned aloud. That would be an overt act of aggression. But alterations subtle enough to induce unease. Disrupt biological processes dependent on pure oxygen. Remind the Council, without stating it outright, that our life-giving molecule 
is not quite so easily controlled. 